Cool. So we're going to learn about transitions. And uh, to do those transitions you're just looking at, it's just transition two seconds. Everything. That's it. All right, we're done. <laughs> and uh, to see that example, just changing the background, that's here in a different repo. And you can look at that if that JavaScript interested you. I don't think I said that correct. <coughs> golang dash web and then that's in the JavaScript area and then JS curriculum and that's in uh, 3 7 day 3 change background show right change background show that one right there so if you want to uh, find that that's where you find it golang web 53 3 3 7 you can look at that JavaScript. There's something that's a little bit hacky on it. JavaScript. I think I'm doing something wrong there because my highlighter saying yellow. You could do this better, but it runs. And uh, JavaScript's not my favorite language, but it's essential. It's absolutely essential to know how to use it. Cool. So let's uh, let's play transitions. And we're going to go to 83. <coughs> 083. <coughs> Transitions. And we will add a new directory. It'll be 01 uh, basic transition. So, what are we going to transition between? Like, how do we. Where would we have transitions? Have we come into a place where we need a transitions yet? I don't think we have, right? No? Because that really kind of entails JavaScript. Because you have one thing and then you want something else to be there. What about like when they do those uh, the shows on TV and that person goes from big to small in one second? Yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, you're saying you're making the transition because you want to go from one place to the next, right? You want to, as the pictures go, you want to... Yeah, but I think that gets into JavaScript, so I don't know if... Uh, I'll teach you a little bit, okay? We'll just see it. So we'll just do a basic one. So index.html, because it's not a JS class. But you can put your JavaScript inside script tags at the bottom. So you just do a script tag. <coughs> and then you could do things like console log your mama. And everything in JavaScript ends in a semicolon. Every statement. There are some things which aren't statements. They don't end in a semicolon. Now if I run this and I look, console log your mama. Right, so that's the console down here in developers area. They have a console, and that's where you get output stuff in JavaScript. So you could do things like console log two times eighty four, one sixty eight. All right, so console log helps you do stuff, and then you could also do things like create variables var x equals forty two. Console log x forty two. Okay, and uh, you could do like uh, var x equals James. James. And JavaScript is a uh, dynamic type. You could not do this in a statically typed language. The compiler would hit you upside the head. You just took a variable that was declared to a string, and you just declared an integer to it. You assigned an integer to it. Sorry. Assigned an error integer to it. JavaScript is like the loosey-goosey. JavaScript is the programming language equivalent of me. Right? I'm like, I don't care. Whatever. Come, go. See you later. You're here for yourself. You're just going to suffer if you don't learn this when you get out in the work world. That's where you'll pay your price. You know? JavaScript's like, it's a string, it's an int, I don't care. Whatever. Fine. 
No big thing. You do that and like go and goes like, Err! that is a string. Can't mess around with type because it creates ghost errors. Your type has to be types. So that's the difference between dynamic type, which is JavaScript, it's dynamic. Static type, you set the type of a variable, doesn't change. Variables have type and value. It's an int and it's this value. That was cool. How did I do that? No idea how I just did that. No, oh, that's cool, man. Totally cool. That's a control arrow up and arrow down. All right. So that's a uh, var x equals something. So when we talked about the DOM. Right? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? You know? You seeing enough muscle? You, do, you see, do you see the muscle? Huh? Right there. We're talking bank account, baby. It's like what every man should be. Okay? Any questions? Dom. Oh, wrong Dom. It's kind of interesting that Dom is this dude, is some church. And it's also the document object model. <coughs> so here's the DOM. Document, HTML, different objects. It's the model of objects which make up our document. It's the DOM. Okay, so we could say document, and then there's this cool thing called query selector, and we could put any old CSS selector in there. So it could be an element, it could be an ID, it could be a class. So I could say, I could put up here, div, and I could give it an ID of whatever, like you're in Jersey. And then down here, I could say, you know what, select that for me. And then I could do like console log x. But instead of calling it x, I'm going to call it an l because it's an element. So that's variable name is going to remind me this is an element. So I can console log that. Whatever. All right? It's a div. I logged it out. That's what you said the variable equal to. Whatever. Then I could also do a console dir which is like, show me the directory information for that. Strangely enough, my console log, console log, right, without that, look like this. Put that in there, looks like that. I don't know why. That's where I'm like, JavaScript sucks. Because it's the same line of code, but I add another line of code, and then that first line of code changes what it's doing. So there's this video. What? Uh, uh, Gary, that's his name. And I can't show you this on this video, so go watch it yourself. But this is what you're looking for. Destroy all software.com talks what. Okay. What the video looks like when you get here. And I need to say this. JavaScript sucks. And it's totally essential. You have to know it. It's one of the top three languages. When you look at language ranking, just Google language ranking. And for client side, it gives you client side functionality. Meaning this is running on your... You're on people's browsers, right? So it validates forms, does initial validation without having to go to the server. <coughs> so you have to know it, and it sucks. All right, so JavaScript's a little bit wacky, but we do that console dir thing, and then we can do this little arrow, and we can see like everything that is related to that element. Remember, we're talking about 
we're talking about this element here, right? L, where we got this div. And so like here is like all this stuff that's related to this div. Children, you know, child nodes, you know, line. We could come way down here to style, OPQRS, style. Then we could open up style and we see like all of the style possibilities. So you can look through here and be like, what are the different possibilities, right? You know, and this is all how JavaScript does the styles. You know, so they have the names instead of dashes. Like we use background color. They use background color, but without a dash. CSS has a dash. JS is just all together camel case. They call that camel case. Lowercase background, new word, capital, that's camel case, like humps, right, of a camel. So you can see like all the stuff with that console dir thing. <coughs> and uh, I want to show you that because we got that element. So now that we have that element, we could do things to it in JavaScript. So if I, if I do like first up here just in CSS, where I have my uh, selector, and I could do width 100 pixels, height 100 pixels. Am I recording? Cool. Uh, I'm going to make it 500. And uh, and then I do uh, color, background color. What do you want? Blue. Blue. And uh, now when I look at this page, there, right? Cool. So um, now I, could, I have this element. We saw that there's a style and a background color. What do you want? You can use single or double quotes. You can't use single quotes in Go. You could use back ticks and double quotes. It confuses me when I start miss, mixing up my quotes. I'm always going to use double. <coughs> so now, right, it was blue, but now I've said make it orange with JavaScript. So that's loaded as blue. And then JavaScript ran and it changed it to orange. So we could do a transition maybe. And if we look at transitions on MDN. <coughs> Before you do that, what, what amount of time, what part of the amount of time it took? As fast as it could process it. Oh. There's nothing about time in there. But that's a good question. So transition, it says it's an experimental technology. But if we look up can I use. 88% is pretty good. See ya. See ya. And transition is shorthand for transition property, transition duration, transition timing function, transition delay. Initial value as each of the properties of the shorthand, transition delay, duration, property, timing. So whenever you start learning about a shorthand, I say learn about all the individual ones first and use those first. So to learn about these, we could transition property, transition duration, transition timing, transition delay. Transition properties used to specify the names of CSS properties to which the transition effect should be applied. So specify the names of CSS properties. So I might just say background color. Transition background color, right? That CSS property, when I change the background color, apply this transition. Or I could just say all. See, initial value is all. So I don't really need to set that one, but that's what transition property does. And if I wanted to, I could say... I guess I don't know what the heck they're applying. Test one, all sliding vertically. Yeah. 
no examples. So that one was a transition property. Let's put it in. Transition property. All. Okay, so the next one is transition duration. Specifies the number of seconds or milliseconds a transition or animation <coughs> should take to complete. By default, the value is zero seconds, meaning no animation will occur. So some examples, 120 milliseconds, 15 seconds. Makes you wonder how many milliseconds are in a second. I'm thinking 1,000 because mil is 1,000. So milliseconds in a second. Uh, milliseconds wiki. I'd like to just see a table. You know where we can see a table? Godoc.org time. So a second is made up of 1,000 milliseconds. A millisecond is made up of 1,000 microseconds. A microsecond is made up of 1,000 nanoseconds. So there are a billion nanoseconds in a second, nine zeros. There are a million microseconds in a second. There are, are a thousand milliseconds, milla, that makes sense, in a second. And there's one second in a second. So if we say, you know, 500 milliseconds, that's half a second. So transition duration, is that the one we're looking at? That makes sense, it's called duration. Duration. Let's make it a five seconds, so we get a really slow transition. So that's transition duration. Now we have transition timing function. Properties used to describe how the intermediate values of the CSS property being affected by transition effect are calculated. <coughs> this lets you establish an acceleration curve so that the speed of the transition can vary over its duration. The speed of the transition varies over the du duration. This is how things happen in nature. Okay? A wave at the beach goes crash and then right? Slowly fades out. I am not talking in the same speed all the time. I vary my voice at very different paces when I'm talking because that is the way things work in nature. And if it is not like that, then it sounds really weird. Right? Instead, I talk like this, and then all of a sudden I say, and that's the way it is. And I slow it down at the end. You ease it out. So initial value is ease. Ease it out. Right? Ease in, ease out, ease in, ease out. Linear would be just straight, I think. Step start, step end, whatever those do. So you can see them kind of ease and ease in. Difference between ease and ease in. Like that kind of has a harder finish. Kunk. The one on the right has a harder finish. Kunk. The one on the left. Eases into the finish.
specifies the amount of time to wait between a change being requested to a property that's to be transitioned and the start of the transition effect. <coughs> the property will begin to, oh, I just spit on my computer. You ever have that happen in the little, like, 20 different little dots of spit fly out of your mouth? You guys ever have that? They call that yang. In junior high, we called that yang. And you could, you could make it happen by taking your tongue to the roof of your mouth and going. So in junior high, that was very interesting. I just accidentally did it on my computer, though. Uh, so zero seconds indicate the property will begin to animate its transition immediately when the value changes. All right? Well, I say we'll use this, and we're going to wait a couple of seconds so that we can actually see this thing happen. Transition delay, and that's it. So we could have also said transition all five seconds. Ease, three seconds? I don't know. Would that have been the same thing? We'll have to look at transition. Del delay duration property timing function. Delay is at the front. So it's delay. They list delay first. Delay. Duration property, duration property, timing function. Delay, property, duration, timing function. No delay. All right, so let's see what happens now. How many people are interested? Jesus, you're having chair problems today. Jesus, you're having chair problems today. Jesus, you're having chair problems today. Well, we didn't see anything. So we started out as blue, and we just immediately went to orange. So a lot of good that did us. What about if we change the size? L dot style dot width is equal to 100 pixels. Height is equal to 100 pixels. Bam! Instantly. So it looks like we'll need to put in a little bit of a timing function. This is how you learn JavaScript. JavaScript uh, time delay. Time function. Timing function. Uh, JavaScript timing events. Windows timer set interval. Uh, set timeout takes a function. So this is a callback. So it's a function that takes a function. That's a callback. Anytime you pass in a function into another function, the function you're passing in is a callback. Okay? Callbacks confuse people. You don't know that yet. So I'm going to explain it to you and you'll be like, oh, that's easy. But anytime you pass a function into a function, the function you pass in is a callback. The function that received it is going to use it. It'll call back to the code you gave it. So Windows set timeout, it'll run that function, this function, set timeout, which is a function, will run this function in a certain amount of time. Cool. So I'm going to do a uh, var, I'll do a function, var function, create a variable, which is uh, change stuff. That's going to be equal to a function, which takes no arguments. I'm declaring a variable. That's a statement. So I have to do that. So this is going to be change stuff. That's a function. Okay. And now I'm going to do windows.setTimeout. Window.setTimeout. Window dot set time out. <coughs> Change stuff and do it in one thousand. Do it in five three seconds. What's it take? 
milliseconds, 3,000. And that's just straight up milliseconds, so I don't have to say. So I'll do it in three seconds. And I'm going to take off uh, the delay. Uh, and we'll leave the duration. Now let's see what happens. So if this all works well, we'll see blue. Blue. It's orange. And then we could try, uh, you know, whatever different ones here. What was the other one? Ease in, ease out. MDN, and that is timing function. No. Yeah. Ease in out. So to get things to change, you kind of need JavaScript, I think, on the client side. Maybe there's CSS stuff that you do. We have transitions. I think there is. I can't think of the examples right now. Like, how do you dynamically? Oh, you know what we might try? A hover, right? Let's try a hover. So that's a JavaScript example. And I'm going to change this to from basic to JS example. Okay, and basic JS. And after seeing that, you guys probably not. You're probably like, oh, JS doesn't look too bad right? And uh, there's some things that get quirky and I don't like functional programming. But uh, so let's try uh, another one. I'm gonna, just going to copy this one and O2. And I don't know what to call this yet so I'm not sure what it's going to be. But I like that whatever. But instead, whoa, what did I just do? Instead I'm going to add pound whatever Hover, right? Everybody understand? And uh, I'll just change the color here. And I'm going to take out this JavaScript. I don't know what just happened. That's cool. We stay with CSS. Much easier. I don't know why I didn't think of that originally. Yeah, if I come off, go back on. And so I might say that's taking too long. Let me make it 500 milliseconds. Refresh my page. So as I do my hover buttons, let me add a transition to those hover buttons so it's not just like bang, 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 you know? But ease it in, ease it out. Ease in, ease out. That's what you'd set on it, ease in, ease out, ease in, out. So I think transition is, uh, you know, um, totally adds polished feel. And can I use the transition deal is 88%. So there's going to be, you know, more than is great for, you know, 12%. I like to be more like 95%. But uh, for those who don't have it, it just doesn't show transition. That, that's fine. They get the sucky version where it just is like, wank, wank, in, out, right? As opposed to, in, out, right? All right, that's fine. So that 7% gets the sucky version. Because the other 5%, I just write them off. 95% is like my comfort zone. What I shoot for. And then zero development jobs I've done. All right. So that's transition. Pretty cool, eh? 
Ooh, I kind of miss Canadians when I said that. Pretty cool, eh? I'm going to put that CSS one first. CSS hover. Because that's an easier way to explain it. All right. Um, let's transition. Seemed like there was something else I wanted to show you all today. What was it? I didn't mention it. You guys remember and I don't. Gradients? No, I didn't say that. You think I did? Uh, you know what it was? It was CSS Revisited. And we have a bunch of stuff here about selectors, fonts I think we have. But there's different selectors in here, <coughs> which you should know about. So let me just illustrate that, and we'll look at this. Uh, Look at it, uh, some point, like Wednesday. No, we don't come Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, 50 LIs. Uh, I don't know how to use this. Uh, without looking it up. Let me see if I can remember. Uh, I want the child. So UL int child even. UL int child odd. Mm -mm. Background color. I like these colors that were here, the SVG. They had cool names. Dark khaki fire brick or medium turquoise Rebecca purple. Which do you want? Medium turquoise? That didn't work. Let's try this. It's made all purple because maybe zero is odd. There we go. You're the one who asked for purple. <laughs> You know, so you might do uh, you know, zebra striping rows of a table. You don't need JavaScript. It's just nth child even, nth child odd. And so it figures out are you even or are you odd and gives it that color. You can also do nth child four. Or this one be four, twelve, and that was uh, Rebecca purple. And what was the other one? Medium turquoise. You know, so there's some other selectors that you could do. So I was thinking, now nah, we should probably look through that. And you guys got a little taste of entities, entities today. I think enough to sort of figure it out, right? Like you go look up an entity list and see what entities are available. So for homework, you don't want any? Where have we been? Because it's week 14, I don't think I gave you guys anything last week. Just reading assignments. Just reading assignments last week? 
and beat the heck out of you, I think, week 12. Week 13, uh, week 11, I beat the heck out of you. It's week 14. Are you going to put that sign up that you showed us, the video on? I'd like to see it again. What? Are you going to put that on the video? What? That's right. It's on the Golang web repo, so you can just go to... Well, I'll put in what? The W-A-T, and something really interesting came up, so I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, just go to this one, Golang web, and my repositories, and then go to JavaScript. And then go to funny video text. I'll get you there. All right, well, I'll figure out some assignment tonight because my wife wants me to come home. Get out of here. Now. Anybody else still want a plural site sticker? I got one left.